Okay, part three, guys, of narcissistic mothers who turn their sons into their husbands. Let's do it. Learn early in life that people will often leave them behind, and she fears that this will happen with her actual spouse. Her son, however, offers her an opportunity to bind herself to someone who she believes cannot leave her behind. The relationship might never... I did a talk about this this morning, the infinite security that the DNA enmeshed people have. They know they can always fall back on each other via their DNA connection. You're just an outsider. You're not as important as you think you are. Whether it be a father with a daughter, endure the tag on mistress, or the man taking on the mother and the son. You're just a tag on um, instrument for sex and some company. That's all you are. The edifice, the rock of Gibraltar part of the person's relationship is in the enmeshment. Never become physical, but it ultimately does just as much damage to her son's ability to mature and form adult romantic relationships. And this is the part that gets neglected. While it's sexless, it does the same and they're all saying this, it does the same amount of damage as sexual incest, full-blown incest. On the one hand, the covert emotional son feels a sense of grandizement when um, they're in the twos and throws of it with all its allures and lusts and ego stroking and pleasure stroking but for the one that engages sexually with the parent it brings a sense of demoralization so on the one hand covert emotional incest brings grandizement on the other hand sexual incest brings demoralization this is exactly what his toxic mother is hoping will happen Jealous. And just remember, a toxic mother will produce a toxic son, toxic children. Jealousy and control. A narcissistic mother is often obviously jealous of her daughter. She sees her as a threat to her superiority because she is a younger, prettier, smarter, and often more accomplished version of herself. She is also jealous of her son, however. Typically, this takes the form of jealousy toward any relationships he may form with other women. She will... And this happens the other way around as well. Once they've groomed the son, he'll become jealous of any other relationships she has as well, including, be it, in the family where the mother and the son have undermined the authority of the father. ...will seek to destroy any such relationships... She doesn't want her son to be influenced by any other woman in his life. And the son doesn't want the mother to be influenced by any other man in her life. That would undermine his absolute commitment to her. It would... Right? And the son senses that her absolute commitment to him is undermined if she meets another man. I've seen how these people have narcissistic breakdowns and collapses because of this. But also threaten her false self-image. She feels as though the whole world will see that her son has chosen another woman. Of course, she will also take advantage of any argument her son may have with a woman. She will assure... This is 100% because a lot of these narcissistic mothers who are in enmeshed relationships with their sons you will have to challenge and confront them because you'll notice the void. You'll notice that they go missing. And they go missing because they've got, got to give attention to the enmeshed relationship that they're having with the child. And if you don't understand this, you're not going to work out how you're being abused. 
when you meet somebody that's in an enmeshed relationship with a family member and you're trying to have an intimate relationship with that person, inevitably you're going to end up being abused because there's massive voids in the relationship. There's emotional voids in the relationship because those emotions are being shared in the enmeshment and not being shared in the relationship in which they should be. These are the traumatic parts of being involved with people who are enmeshed. You'll never be fulfilled because you're actually um, a third person in the relationship. The primary value that these people have in their hearts and minds is in the enmeshment him that she is not good enough for him and she will make obvious attempts to get him to see them. so see how that woman's sulky in the picture there I've seen it both ways the son will sulk the mother will sulk they have terrible trouble seeing one or the other getting attention from other people that her son often feels guilt ridden when he is caught between the two women in him now you'll see the mother standing over the son in this instance. In other instances, you'll see the son standing over the mother. This is the back end of it that you don't see outside closed doors. His life, he is still tightly bound to his mother, and he feels bad when she believes he is abandoning her or taking someone else's side against her. And this is the same for the son when the mother meet somebody the son feels like he's being abandoned and i've tried to explain it to these women but they don't understand it or comprehend it until the son starts to have a psychological or narcissistic breakdown collapse her actions are so toxic that they are often very effective at destroying any relationship her son has with another woman and again this goes for the son with the mother the toxicity is infinite. Finally, narcissistic mother-son enmeshment is a toxic attachment between mother and son that can damage the son for the rest of his life. It creates deep emotional wounds that last a lifetime and create a pattern of dependent, abusive behavior. These sons have difficulty breaking away from the toxic web in which their narcissistic mother has trapped them. They are easily manipulated by emotional triggers associated with profound guilt and shame, but there is help. To begin the healing journey, the son of a narcissistic mother must first break free of her manipulation. That means identifying and healing. I don't know why they've got these people in the wheelchairs. They've had several of these people in the wheelchairs. A lot of these sons and mothers are completely healthy and active and functioning quite fine. Um, reducing the concept of this to a handicapped person isn't justifying how dangerous and stealth this is. In emotional wounds. I've created a five-step roadmap to heal emotional triggers that can help you do just that. This handy guide will take you through the process of identifying, diffusing, and even healing those emotional wounds that create debilitating triggers. If you would like a free copy of this guide, just click on the link below and I will send it directly to your inbox. You so this is the channel Inner Toxic Relief if you want a copy of that manual. Where did that go? There it is there. So I hope you've enjoyed this book, guys. Um, this is a very big problem in our communities now and a lot of men are on the end of these women who are psychologically enmeshed with these sons. They're usually brats. On the one hand, they'll make out that they like you, but the truth of the fact of the matter is they hate you. They don't want you around. Um, unfortunately, the mothers are very weak and spineless when it comes to standing for the relationship, and they don't care because they know 
they can fall back onto the security and longevity, infinite longevity of the covert emotional incest. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, theologist, or Dr. J.W. Morrison, theologist. I don't care what you call me. I really don't care. I've lived this. I've seen it several times. Thank you for joining me, and bye for now.